to this uh, special interview on your channel of choice, Movie Television, today the 15th of uh, February, in, of January rather, in the year 2021. Uh, it is another beautiful day. We continue to mask up and to observe social or physical distance. Now, he has made the name, or he has been in the news of late. He has, uh, he has been accused as well as he has also counter-accused people within his political party and those that are not in his political party. He is my guest tonight, and he will help us to answer some of the questions that many people have, ranging from the contract that is purportedly to, be, to have been given to him with 40 million kwacha. Also, he has been accused that... Um, he has been, uh, you know, at the center of um, bringing confusion or taking confusion to Kafue constituency. Max Chongu, who goes by the title, Die Hard PF member, is my guest. Max, good evening and welcome to this special interview. Good evening. I'm so sorry. I came late. They closed one of the main roads outside. But mm. it's better to be here than never. Okay. Those of you that are watching us on... Uh, Movie TV Decoder Channel 1, many thanks to you. And those of you that are watching us on uh, Top Star Decoder, yours is Channel 104. Or better still, you can join the conversation or the program on Top Star on, on Facebook, which is uh, Ask a Movie. Max, want to look at uh, governance and politics. First thing first, I'll ask this personal question. Are you experiencing infighting? In the patriotic front <laughs> what a tough question yeah but um, i think i would give um, i'll say yes or no yes and no at the same time yes let's start with the yes <laughs> yeah okay yes of course uh even in Bemba they say mm. so we don't expect not to have wrangles of course it's normal to have wrangles but what is important is how we come back from our angles to regroup and unite in readiness for August general elections. <clears throat> Do you think you'll be able to unite and stop the infighting? You've accepted here to say they are infighting. Do you think you reach at a point or at a time where you forgo these fightings and focus on the 2021 general election? You see, infights were there even in the times of UNIP, infights were there at the times of MMD, infights are there even in PF, even in oppositions there are infights. But what is more important about us is the common goal. And the common goal is to retain power on the, in August, come August, we are retaining power. So definitely we are going to put aside all this and stay focused on the common goal. What is it that uh, you are fighting for within the party? You are, one, you are one family, but what is it that you are fighting for? Of course, um, when you're talking about politics, of course, people might fight because of positions, people might fight because of having different people with different backgrounds and having different political aspirations. So sometimes they might clash and that might cause that. It's normal. It is normal. Uh, there have been these allegations or rumors that um, some ministers are positioning themselves to take over from ECL before 2021, before 2021, 12th August. Also, some rumors are that there are some youths who are being sponsored by some ministers to be causing violence in the party. Which camp do you belong to? I don't belong to any camp. That's why I'm called Maxwell Chongo PF Diehard. I only belong to the Patriotic Front Party and my loyalty is to the Patriotic Front Party and the president, Edgar Chagualungu. Are there ministers who are positioning themselves to take over from ECO before? I'm not talk? sure because I understand a lot of people have got different political uh, aspirations, so I wouldn't know who is positioning himself for what. But of course those rumors are there. Recently there was an audio that went viral on social media, and uh, you were defending the former Minister of Health to say this is the man who has helped some people in the party, grassroots. And uh, according to that audio, you said there are some people that are just trying to frustrate or to fight him. Who are these people? 
You see, from the look of things, from the way most of the things are happening, first of all, you need to understand that as a party member, it's my duty to protect anyone in the party, regardless of their status, regardless of their position, regardless of their height, color, and body weight. And Dr. Chitaluchiru is a PF member. So when there are those attacks that are coming from outside, we are not going to sit with our hands folded, legs crossed, and watch people attack a PF member. We'll have to defend. That's part of each and every well-meaning for PF member. That's the duty of each and well-meaning for PF member. When you say you, you're not just going to sit and watch people attacking from outside, these attacks, are they coming from within the party or outside the party, from your, your opponents? When I was defending Dr. Shtarichufia, the attacks were coming from outside the party. People did not really understand. Yes, maybe one or few individuals within the party could have been... It, not everyone that claims to be PF is PF at some point, you understand. There are people that could have been planted from outside to come and stir up confusion within the party hierarchy. So when you see that this person is being treated unfairly, it's my duty to come and defend that person, just the way I defend the party, the way I defend the president, because I consider Dr. Shtarich Rufia to be a senior member of the party, is a member of the Central Committee, and we all know how we're supposed to treat and respect members of Central Committee in our party. And if anyone from our party is being attacked, it's our duty as party functionaries to go there and defend. Apart from uh, the president, Dr. Chirufia, and uh, the Home Affairs Minister, Stephen Kampiongo, who else have you protected who has been attacked? I have defended the Father Frank Wale before. I have defended the uh, uh, Honorable Dora Slia before. I have defended the uh, Honorable George Penda uh, before. I've defended quite a lot before. I've the defended Honorable Jean Kapata. I've defended Honorable uh, Professor Nkanduro. The National Youth Chairperson has been attacked by some people in the party. Why have you not defended him? Those are different attacks. Mm. Those are different attacks. How different are they? The attacks With the that attacks are that at, you defended listen, the people that you mentioned. The attacks that are aimed at assassinating somebody's political career. Mm -hmm. And they are not necessarily attacks, but concerns that have been brought up by the majority sympathizers of the party. And they feel that the answers, the correct answers, are not being provided. Mm. So when you say the National Youth Chairman has been attacked, tell me, what type of attack are you talking about? Who attacked him? And then I'll be able to explain. Because as far as I'm concerned, people have been just registering their concerns to say, the National Youth Executive is not functioning the way it's supposed to be. It's not meeting people's expectations. And that is a general concern. That is a an innocent concern. So you can't classify that to be an attack. Do you also believe uh, or do you also back the same sentiments that are coming from people to discredit or to say the National Youth Executive is not functioning? Are you also agreeing with those people that are raising these issues to say the National Youth Chairperson and the Youth Executive is failing the party and failing the young people. Are you also agreeing when, with those when, sentiments? When you say, am I agreeing to the sentiments of saying the National Youth Executive is not functioning, I will say no, because the National Youth Executive is functioning, but it's, it might not meet people's expectation, what they expect it to do within the party hierarchy. Mm. So there's a difference between saying it's not functioning and it's not meeting people's expectations. So do you agree that it's not meeting people's expectations? To some extent, yes. And what is it that you're doing? Because you've said yours is to defend put, the party and are, defend are, members are, of the party. We have put up suggestions in-house, and it's up to the National Youth Chairman to, to make a move and try to invite some of those suggestions and see if those um, uh, suggestions can be actualized and turned into opportunities that are needed to improve the welfare of our youths in our party. On the 60th of uh, this month, we saw the Parliamentary Accounts Committee summoning the Ministry of Health, summoning other statutory bodies or other, you know, government wings like Zamra, uh, Zabs, as well as medical stores and uh, those glaring, you know, allegations or revelations that were, you know, brought to the fore, and Zambians were made, you know, to believe that this is actually what is happening in the ministry, and this is what has happened. But today, we've received news or a statement 
from the company at the center of supply. They are saying there are people that have been sponsored to fight the ministry as well as the company. And they have written to ZAPs not to follow or not to engage or involve themselves in these fights. First of all, the happenings that Zambians were told to say this is what has been going on in the Minister of Health on the 6th of uh, January through the Parliamentary Accounts Committee. What do you make of that? What were, Zambia told? What were Zambians told? Zambians were told that um, they were supplied with uh, defective uh, condoms and gloves as well as expired medicine, but the company that supplied has denied, say, that was not our supply. And Zambians were told that um, a license was issued to the company on a Saturday and on a Sunday, and the people that, that worked on a Saturday and Sunday were not paid anything. And these were some of uh, the, the revelations that came out of that uh, 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 Parliamentary Accounts Committee meeting. Okay, my, my, my response is based on what you have just told me and I will respond in my own personal capacity as Maxwell Chong, yes. and not the spokesperson of the party, mm. neither the spokesperson of that particular company that was accused to have supplied wrong stuff or maybe expired stuff. Number one, I am against the idea of having fake products on the market, including expired drugs, because now we are talking about people's lives. But what I want to appeal to the Zambians is to read thoroughly. We've got investigative wings in this nation, I think the best before we point fingers at each other, let's advocate to see if they can put this case on TV so that people can watch and understand it fully. Because I strongly believe that there is a hidden and dangerous conspiracy. And this was a fight among business houses and our hardworking health minister, Honorable Dr. Shitari Chufia just to our victim. So first of all, we need to read. We need to wait the investigative wings. And I'm told they've been asked to investigate the matter thoroughly. So let's wait and see the response. If I told they supplied expired drugs, condoms, gloves, then they should be brought to book. The Parliamentary Accounts Committee sat and they told the nation that the contract was worth 17 million US dollars. The company, let alone came and said, no, it was $3.9 million. What do you make of the uncoordinated, you know, even a report that has been given to parliamentarians and that of the company? These uncoordinated responses or uncoordinated or half-baked information that we have continued to have from the ministry now to parliament. I think that's the reason why earlier on I said, let's wait for the report from the investigative wings because... As such technicalities are making the case actually interesting mm. because we would want to know how come there's different figures so now that the case has been handed over to investigative wings let's wait and see the outcome because at the end of the day it, if it was witch hunt it will come out mm. if it was true they supplied fake drugs fake condoms it will come out mm. and i think our people in the in our investigative wings are doing all their best to get to the bottom line of all this Let's get to you. You have also been accused or you have been labelled that um, you were awarded a contract with 40 million. To start with, Max, for how long have you been in business? I was in business before the Patriotic Front Party formed government. I had three nightclubs in 2008. Big Brother 1 in Avondale, Big Brother 2 in Garden. Big Brother 3, as you are going to Kalimba Farms by Chris Moore, are two boutiques and are the running car business in town. So I was in business even before the Patriotic Front Party formed government. And everyone knows about that. And the issue of 40 million, I think those are people that build castles in the air. You understand? 40 million, you're talking about $2 million. That is not a contract that you just go and get from your father's or grandfather's backyard as if you're picking tomato, no. And I've never had a contract of that magnitude. So those are some of those sponsored mouthpiece 
by the opposition to bring confusion within the patriotic front party because they know that they have got nothing to tell the people of Zambia. They have got nothing to promise the people of Zambia. Most of the things the patriotic front government under the leadership of President Edgar Chagualongo has achieved them. So now the only thing they can do is to rely, on, to rely and depend on confusion in PF. And those are sponsored, sponsored topics. I was shocked that some of my colleagues within the party hierarchy could believe such. We heard about that contract which was awarded to Chiza. That was just $1 million. It made noise the whole country. How can $2 million not make noise? I have never been awarded. Having said that, that doesn't mean that I'm not entitled to business. I'm a Zambian I'm, and I'm entitled to big contract. And what I want personally, I want to see a young person who will be our next Dangote, maybe in the next five or ten years from now. Zambia should have its own Dangotes. I am tired of seeing people of foreign origin coming into our country, getting all these big businesses and shipping the money out, leaving us watching in the terraces. I want to see more Zambians, mostly the young people, participating. And tomorrow, if I was to see a tender of that magnitude, believe you me, I'll be one of them that is going to participate. Because I'm entitled to it, I'm a Zambian just like you're entitled to it, and any other person in Zambia is entitled to a business. For so long, for so many years, we've been sitting, watching people coming into our country, making fortunes and leaving, leaving us languishing in abject poverty, or living above, slightly above the poverty line. So it's our time now to start participating. And I encourage every Zambian, more especially young people, to rise up and participate in these big contracts. You keep on saying these are sponsored, uh, you know, attacks from the opposition. But there are some people that have believed within the PF to say, we knew it, that these are the people that have been working with this minister and they've been given a, a contracts. But why are you just accusing the opposition instead of accusing your fellow members look, of the party? Look, we are in politics. We are all in politics, but there are two types of people in politics. Mm. Tell there us. are those whose calling is to be in politics by God. And there are those that are in politics hoping they can get a business, they can get a job, or better their lives. So those that understand what they are doing, they will read. To start with, they will search for the origin of that statement. It's watchdog. Has watchdog ever said anything good that the PF government has done? Nothing. So why would the PF member sit and convince himself that now Watchdog is telling him the truth. When all these years Watchdog has been saying bad things about the PF government, bad things about President Lungu, bad things about the PF leaders, bad things about PF members, now the PF goes and writes, Max was given a contract of 40 million, and then you sit there as a PF member and convince yourself that this time around they're telling you the truth. So those are the people that don't really know what they're doing in politics. Because politics is about strategies, it's about games. And they are playing a game of confusion. And you can't fall prey to it if you really understand what you're doing. What do you make of uh, your fellow members within the PF that believe that story? Are they also sponsored? Well, I wouldn't know who believed it and who did not. But, but you've just said, you've said, continued, you've said those, it here yeah, to say... For those that are listening, to say, you, I've said yes. Mm -hmm. You, if you believe that, then you don't really know what you're doing. But now, if you say, what do I say to the people that have believed it? It's unfortunate. Because the first question I would ask them is that, since when did Watchdog start, started saying good things about PF? That today, it will make one believe that they're telling them the truth. So it's unfortunate. Because they're making them weak, and they're making the party vulnerable to attacks. They need to stand. Even if there is a problem, you can't go on a blob to start making noise. You would wait and sort it out within the confines of the patriotic front party. So for those that want to rush to blogs and what, that is what the opposition wants. The opposition wants to bring confusion in our party. So when you start doing that, the opposition would sit and start rejoicing. You've talked about... Um... Zambians owning companies or Zambians that, you know, bid for a tender and they're not being supported. What do you think is making people to stand on an anthill whenever they hear that, no, 
this contract has been given to this. You've talked about Chisa. You are one of those that has been accused. Say, why have, have they awarded this contract to this? And a lot of, or many Zambians who have been awarded contracts, genuinely, but Zambians themselves who stand and demean uh, a fellow Zambian. What do you think is making this? You see, what is making that is pure jealousy. Pure jealousy and laziness, hatred. Okay? From time and memorial, the president has been preaching relentlessly on the need to improve the welfare of the Zambian people, regardless of our political affiliations. Now, with the coming in of blogs, Facebook, what and what, it has made people lazy. You can't wake up in the morning just because you're a PF member. You bath, you even dress up nicely, then you go and sit comfortably in your chair, put your phone on the charger, and just start blogging the whole day and expect an opportunity to come and knock on your door as if it's manna falling from heaven. It can't happen that way. But the president from time and again has been emphasizing on the need for young people to be innovative. You wake up in the morning, whether you're a PF member or you're a UPND member, stop fighting battles that are not adding value to your life. If you make noise in the blog from morning to evening, if you insult in the blog, from morning to evening, if you disrespect people in the block, or you want to threaten people, you want to show that you've got muscles, you are well pumped, you are a good boxer, you are a karateka, you must ask yourself a question if by the time you'll be going back to bed, those things will pay your bills, those th things will pay your children's school fees, those things will put food on the table, those things will put shelter above your head. And if they are not going to do it, then what's the point of doing that? So some of us have been listening to what our leaders have been saying. If you were to judge, from the marks uh, prior to 2016 general election and the marks now, they're two different people. Hmm. Because I know why I'm in politics and I listen to what the leaders say. You can't blame others for participating or getting a tender or a business when they're going there to look for opportunities and you're seated at home making noise in a block. You can't. That's laziness. How do we, work, or do, how do we overcome this? It's mindset change. People must, 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 must change the way they think and understand things. Surely you can't just wake up and you start making noise. Way back we never had this. We could see our parents going to look for opportunities, look for jobs. Way back even young people, you could see them. Not even way back. Let me just say maybe four or five years ago. You will find people in town looking for jobs, looking for what to do, businesses with files and what. Nowadays the only thing you see is they're on the blogs shouting, no, we don't get what, we don't get what. You don't expect the whole lot of the ministry to come to relocate to your house and say, we have got these opportunities. Have you finished blogging? Please pick one opportunity. We're about to go back to the ministry. No. You've stood and you've spoken or you've talked and defended or you've talked about the, the plight of young people, the grassroots, in the party, you said some ministers are not willing to help the youths with opportunities, with empowerments, while other, other ministers who are doing that are being attacked left, right, and center. What sort of help or opportunities or empowerment are you talking about? Look, to start with, each ministry has got a different activity of economic value that it can give to the young people, regardless of their political affiliation. Okay? So I would not certainly pick at one. For instance, we've got, um, we've got this, what we call, internship program under the Ministry of Youth and Sport. Those opportunities, they have to be made available to the people on the ground. And I must say this, I must com commend the Minister of Youth and Sport. He has made an effort to make sure that these opportunities are made available to the people on the ground, They're mostly the young people. We have seen people being empowered with uh, uh, tankers, fuel tankers. We've seen people being empowered with uh, uh, farming equipment and uh, maybe uh, funds, you know, to venture into farming. You know, a lot of different empowerment programs. But there are others that do not necessarily make an effort to open up the doors of opportunity to the people on the ground. Mm. Maybe that is where my concern was. You, you talked about people reading and uh, trying to understand. Uh, let me go back to the issue of Honeybee. Um, others have said the firing of the minister is connected to the scandals 
other ministers and the honeybee scandal. Others have argued to say the, there is nowhere mentioned to say the minister was fired because of the honeybee scandals. And uh, one, I don't know whether you still believe that is a member of your party, he said, with what happened, it has got nothing to do with the former minister. But people are calling on the overhaul at the Ministry of Health. What do you make of this? You see, I'll be very, very careful in talking about that topic. Mm. Okay. Number one, the head of state makes the final decision. The head of state, the head of state is my president in the party. And he's also the president of the Republic of Zambia. And he's made his decision. For now, I'm waiting to hear what the investigative wings will say about this. And then I can contribute positively. Then you will contribute positively. Uh, l l let's move on. Uh, let's talk about uh, the statement that was issued by the Secretary General of your party. He made a call to those that are aspiring to say, do not decampaign the sitting members of parliament. Yours, if you want to campaign, just say yourself, but don't decampaign these sitting or serving members of parliament. Others looked at it as if it is intimidation, that the SG is now intimidating people, trying to shut their voices. Others were calmly to say, this is the way to go. We, we are one party, we are one family, and we need to speak with one voice. What do you make of the, of, of that statement from the SG to say all those that are aspiring don't decampaign the sitting members of parliament. Look, before I come to the statement, um, I know a lot of people got excited when the president said, allow people to go in constituencies and campaign or maybe work with the people on the ground. That statement did not mean that we must go in constituencies and cause confusion. You know, mm. there's this common statement that a lot of young people are abusing today, you know, and I'm finding it so strange. You can't say, I want to stand as a member of parliament before you are convinced that the ground has accepted you. Okay. But that is a topic for another day. You are saying the SG said those words. You can't go in a constituency where you've got a sitting PF member of parliament and start decampaigning that person. After that, then claim to be loyal to the party and the president. That's a lie. Because when you're decampaigning that person, you're not only decampaigning that sitting in member of parliament, PF member of parliament, you're decampaigning the party. Because if you're that excited, you go to a constituency, I go to, to Mandevo and I say, no, Vajini, no, Vamifiro, hey, shan, shan, shan. Is it Vajini I'm decampaigning, I'm decampaigning the party and the president? We are going to a general election, for Christ's sake. We need to know how to go on the ground. If you want to go and take over from Virgin, there are better ways of going there to take over from Virgin Kapata. You can't just go there and disrespect. You can't go in Munari Constituents and disrespect Honorable Professor Nkanduru and you claim to be loyal to the party and the president. That's a lie. Because they are there representing the party. So how do you go and de campaign a person who represents the party that you believe in? So the Secretary General of the party was 100% correct, and I support that statement. You can campaign quietly. There are so many constituencies. We can't all be fighting in constituencies where we already have PF members of parliament. Why are you calling it fighting? Because how do you go and, you, it comes from the statement, how do you go and campaign a sitting PF member of parliament? Because she has failed. She has failed. And I feel like uh, I can uh, offer better leadership Is and it development. everyone that has failed? Yeah, like in these, uh, there are selected constituencies so, that we can talk about. So now that is another topic. Of where we are growth. seeing members from the party telling the people, telling even people on the structures to say, I can offer better leadership and I can bring development. Monali is one of them. Mandevu is one of them. We haven't heard a lot in, 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 in Chawama, in Kanyama. But if you look at Lusaka, you are able to sing out constituencies like Monali, Mandevu, where people are but, saying there is but, no development because of this. Person. But the topic here, the main point is about whether the statement by the Secretary General of the party was correct or was in order or not. Mm. 
and I stand here on firm grounds to say that statement was in order and it was very correct because one cannot claim to be a PF member who is loyal to the party and the president, then you go and decampaign a PF, a PF member of parliament. What about those uh, who are saying, no, the SG is just uh, trying to, 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 to suppress us, it's trying to shut our mouths, it's trying to shut our campaigns. He doesn't want us to stand. He is supporting his fellow members of the Central Committee. He doesn't want the young people to stand in 2021, come August 12th. I've got a video which I just saw today where the SG was saying, the President told him that August general election, there will be nothing like, no, we won't have a SG, we won't have a none. You have to work with the people on the ground, and it's the people on the ground that are going to give PF the members of Parliament that they want. And these were his words, the SG, in that yes, video. Yes, yes, yes. And he said, mm -hmm. Those were his words. So I think it's just straightforward. So for those of, uh, maybe for those that are saying the SG is being unfair, uh, I don't think they would have used the same statement had the president said stop going in constituencies where we have PF members of parliament and you go there to decampaign them. They would have said, oh yeah, we are fed. Maybe because it's coming from the SG and the few is not the president. Maybe that's why they would say that. But that is in this plea. What do you think is making young people now to stand up and say we want to take over leadership? Because we've seen a lot of young people, a lot of emerging politicians saying, I want to, take, I want to stand. I want to. What is it that is causing? What do you think is causing? <clears throat> I think the indications are there, you know, uh, August uh, general elections will be about millennial votes, votes, you know, millennials in short. So most young people, I think they've been in the background, they've been in the terraces supporting our elderly people, and they just feel they want to be the solution to the problem they've been complaining about. Maybe I might be one of those that would want to be a solution. Are you one of the people that want to stand come 12th of August this year? It's not about me saying I want to stand. That's mm. where we all get it wrong as mm. young people. It's not about me saying I want to stand. It's not about the PF structures in Kafue to tell me that you will be the member of parliament or you will stand on the PF ticket. No. It's about the people on the ground. And at the moment, I'm just working with the people on the ground. I'm giving back to the community, and that is Kafue district. And if that time in future, God willing, the people of Kafue district, not those on party structures, not those that are close to me, but the people on the ground, if they say we want to go with Max Ochong, then I will declare interest to contest. When you say in the near future, you are working with the people on the ground yes. at the moment. Yes. And you said in the near future, if yes. these people reach out to you, then you're going to accept. I will declare. How soon is that future? It's very soon. From the look of things, it's very soon. How soon? You see, the, 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 the people of Kafue have been um, treated unfairly in terms of um, representation before Parliament. Okay. Development is nothing. They've got an absentee MP there. And you leave them and up to 24 days something? they assisting on the ground, working on the ground with the people. And if they feel that is what they expected and that's what they need, they need from a leader, and they say, Max Chongo, please declare in February, I will declare. I have been to all the parts of Kafue, most of them. Recently, I was in Chiawa, and tomorrow I'll be in Chanyanya uh, and these other rural areas. So if at all people decide to tell me that I, we feel you are the right person to, to represent us, I will stand. You, you, you talked about it is not up to you, it's yes. not up to the people and the structures. Yes. News that is coming from Kafue is that Marx does not respect structures. Marx doesn't want to work with structures in the party. Look, there are two, there's an option that we were given. People have been given options to say, declare if you've got interest. There was a meeting that was organized by our party structures in Kafue, the district, where they called all those that have got interest and want to contest on the PF ticket in Kafue come general elections. They went there. For me, I'm not convinced that I will contest because I am waiting for a feedback from the ground. So if I'm waiting for the feedback from the ground, I'll do what I've been doing from, from the past, in short. 
And my job is to ensure that I mobilize the people for the party and President Edgar Chagwarungu in readiness for 2021 general elections in August. And if you have been seeing the t-shirts I've been wearing when going to Kafue to conduct those activities, they've got a straight message maximizing on the presidential vote. My area of interest is to ensure that people appreciate the patriotic fund government, is to make sure that people get to know what the patriotic fund government under the leadership of President Edgar Chagwarungu is doing has done and will do for them. Thereby, they'll exchange or pay back by giving the party and president the vote. And that is my job for now. But if that time comes that the people of Kafue decide to say, you are the right person, I will. You've talked about helping the people in Kafue. What is it? What, what sort of help have you rendered to the people of Kafue? <laughs> The people of Kafue have been affected by so many challenge, challenges, just like any other district in this country. And all they needed was a selfless leader that would try to come and mitigate in some of those challenges. And I have been to Kafue to assist farmers. I have been to Kafue to assist even our party structures. They never had transport. We gave them a bus and we are going to give them another bus today, tomorrow, meaning they have two to go and mobilize the party. I have been to the rural parts of Kafue where I've assisted even, you know, the elderly people that do not have the energy to go to the uh, We have assisted them with things like Mirimio, things like startup capitals. I have assisted almost all the markets in Kafue district with what is called revolving funds, where they will be to just they have enhanced their capitals, already existing capital, you know. I've given them revolving funds. Each market, not that I'm getting back that money or anything, I've given them those monies. Because with this COVID-19, a lot of businesses were affected. So even tomorrow, I'm going to assist almost 600 people that were affected with floods in Kafue by way of giving them milmio and other necessities. When you say you gave a bus and you're going to give a bus, are you giving this bus to existing structures of the party or you are creating your own parallel structures? That is where I almost laughed when you said it's not working with the structures because I asked the structures to say, what is it that you really need for now that will help you mobilize the party? Mm. And they said, We've, we don't have transport and Kafue district is vast. And so that's the reason why we gave the main body the first bus and we have uh, procured another one which will be delivered tomorrow for the Women's League. So that What do you make of uh, the statement that came from Matero Member of Parliament, who is still a member of the PF, who said, it is not me who has failed, but the party has not helped me to deliver development and the promises that I made for the people of Matero. Others have called him all sorts of names. Others have said, no, he's a bitter man. Others have said, no, he's working with the opposition. But is this not true, that if you're not receiving support from the party, you can't deliver? I think uh, Honorable Richard Kazia is just being um, unfair to the party. I think the party gave him the platform. They picked him to be the member of parliament for Matero. The party gave him another extra platform. He was made minister at some point. So he had everything within his reach to assist the people of Matero. So it's not the party that failed to assist the people of Matero. It's Mr. Kazia that failed to assist the people of Matero. So it was wrong for him to come and slap the party in the face by saying, no, they are not assisting me. There are some other members of parliament that are not even, they've never even been ministers, but they've delivered in their constituencies. So for Mr. Kazia to say that, that was very unfair on the party side. As we conclude, Max, your message to the people of Kafu, I know that a lot is happening. We've heard, uh, we've, we've heard people that are, that are of got interest for Kafu and they've been going to Kafu. They, they, they are also mobilizing. I can mention, I, I, I know Lillian uh, uh, Matanda is one of the people yes. that, that, that she, she, she's on the ground, she's mobilizing, yes. and you've said you've worked with the people. And, and, and others uh, that I cannot even mention here that, that have shown interest. I think my, mes to stand my message to the Kafue. people of Kafue is that uh, Kafue is a very uh, quiet and humble town. 
and we are we are a small family in Kafue. We know each other, you know, and we love each other. Yes, there's a competition, and that's a good part of a democratic party, like the Patriotic Front Party. It will allow a lot of people to compete. At the end of the day, the, when, they are, when our members of Central Committee, which is the, uh, the, the biggest organ in our party, sit to select who will represent um, uh, Kafue constituency, we should all come together and use all this exposure, all these people that we have met to bring them together to make the party win and the president retain power. If you are not picked, if the people that you've been working with approach you to say, Max, we want you to stand, or Max, come and um, continue with uh, what you've been doing as a member of parliament, and then you're not successful or you're not picked, are you ready or willing to work with the person that will be picked to represent the party or stand look, on look, the party ticket? In the I'm, a, I'm a Christian, and despite all these things that people talk about in public domain, I read the Bible. My plans are different from what God has for me. I might say I want to be a member of parliament. Maybe God even wants me to be a president and not a member of parliament. So if it is not mine and they give it to another person, what is important is the party and the president at the end of the day. So I would definitely rally behind that person and support what it is. Max, thank you so much for making an appearance on this special interview. Thank you so much. This has been the special interview Friday's edition. Uh, we'll be back again uh, another time with yet another edition of um, a special interview on behalf of my director, uh, Andrew Mwansa. Until next time, good night.